It's there. Galatians chapter number 2. You know, I want Galatians chapter 2. I want to read this. Verse 1 through 5. Some say, well, well Kirk, it doesn't. Not, yeah, well, maybe there, it, it's not an issue for nobody here. But I guarantee you, there, there, there's a lot of, a, a lot, a, a lot of places now where, where this is an issue. And there's a lot of these teachings where, where, where they're flat out commanding people to come back under the law of Moses. They're doing it. They're doing it. Uh, they're doing it. I mean, if I could name some of them, and, and it's a perversion. It's a perversion of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a perversion of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. As a matter of fact, he was so. It, let me read some here. Galatians chapter 2, verse 1. Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by... Isn't that something? The Holy Ghost spoke to him and said, Paul, there's something going on up there that's threatening my whole church. And I need you there. That's what. Hey, anytime you travel by revelation, God's telling you, it's usually there's a problem there and I want you there. That's exactly right. That's, that's the truth. It's the truth, man. I could give you testimony after testimony in traveling where there was a problem somewhere. That's exactly right. And God said, I, I want you to deal with it in a certain area. I, I'm telling you the truth. I'll never forget the place where there was a rebellion in the pastor. I'll never forget that. Pastor Seabury, I'll never forget that. That whole church was in rebellion against the pastor. Yes, there was. There was rebellion against the pastor. And God changed that whole thing around. Martha remembers it. Martha, man, I've, I've shared about it before. That's the place where the first word when I got to the Pope, I said, the judgment of God for rebellion is death. Yeah, that's how I started out preaching. Man. That's exactly right. The whole church turned around, people. Yes, it did. A month later, I heard a report. I did my, I got out. The whole church had turned around. Fear of God hit the place. I'm telling you the truth. They repented. They sought God. Yes, they did. The whole church had turned around. Yes, sir. Yes, it did. It was different. There was a problem there. That's exactly right. And God has specifically told me there to go there by revelation. He told me exactly where to be at the time. I had no under, I didn't, I didn't, and at the time when I went, I did not know. As a matter of fact, I didn't know what I was going to deal with until about 45 minutes before I stepped into the pulpit. Because I, I got there, and, it's just, and in 45 minutes, man, I really, when I was praying, God told me what was the problem, and that's the first I knew about it. Amen. But he said, I'm just telling the truth. I went up by revelation and communicated unto them the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run, or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Remember that bondage back in Acts, what they call bondage? Acts chapter 15, they made it clear. He said, verse 15, To whom he gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour. That's the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Now, go on down to verse number 11. Now, Peter shows up. All righty. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Do you realize what, what, what the apostle Paul did? I mean, the issue was so great at that time. The issue what was so great that he was actually took the chance. Yes, that's right. It was a chance, so to speak. It was a chance. Hey, come on. You, you, you don't think Peter uh, listened to too many men, do you? <laughs> Brother. Brother, he, he had the keys, you know. He, of course, he, once he used the keys, though, he used the keys. Hey, you know, a key is good. When you open the door once, that key ain't too much good after that. But it's good for the time. I mean, granted, if you've got a thousand doors to open, fine. You hold on to the key. But if you just got one or two doors to open, once you open them two doors, brother, your key don't do too much good after that anyway. You know, and, and, G, and Peter did open the door. He had the key. But once he used the key, that key didn't do him much good after that. You know what I'm saying? See, then Paul had the revelation. See, the dispensation was given to Paul. The keys were, the keys were given to Peter. But the, the revelation of the dispensation was given to Paul. See, it really was. But I'm just saying, you know, he did take a chance. For that, and why? But when Peter was come to Antioch, it was stood him to the face, because he was to be late. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself. He what? He was causing a different difference. 
He was saying there's still a difference. And yet, Paul, there is no difference. It, they had already said that made no difference between us and them. But see, he was being, he was being, why? Because he was being, he was being drawn away. Amen. He was fearing them which were of the circumcision. And other Jews dissembled likewise with them. Insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles and not as the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as the Jews? And he flat out confronted them. He said, I withstood them to the face. All righty. And I said, you're not walking upright according to the gospel, Peter. You're not doing uprightly according to the gospel. This gospel puts no difference between the Jew and the Gentile. That middle wall of partition is broken down. Amen. Amen. That's, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. He said, you can sit down and eat with the Gentiles. Yeah. God, sh and, and if there's anybody who should have known it, God, Peter gave God the, God gave Peter the revelation. Man, flat out right before his eye, of a vision, the whole shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Peter was kind of hard-headed, though. It took, hey, 14 years later, still didn't have it. Amen. Still couldn't see it clearly. That, that's probably why God really had to raise up Paul. And give him the dispensation. Why? Because Peter still didn't. Come on, 14 years later, he still didn't see it clearly. Paul had it so clear, though, that he just, Amen. right there, didn't, didn't change. But I'm just saying, go on down the line. Galatians chapter 3. See, the issue was the gospel there. Verses. You're going to see. Galatians chapter 3. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you, this only what I learned of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? You know, when I received the Holy Ghost, I didn't even know whether there was any law of anything. I'm telling you the truth. Well, that night, all I can remember is that preacher preached about Jesus. And I'm not even sure exactly how or what he preached about it. You understand what I'm saying? But when I went to that altar, all I knew that night is that I was a lost man. I knew that. I remember that. Why? Because I knew that before I went that I was lost. Amen. And when I got up out of that altar after seeking God and praying and crying out and repenting, I got up a different person. Amen. Amen. And I received the Holy Ghost by the listening to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's the way I received it. It was by the hearing of faith. I heard the faith and the word of God. And that's what saved my soul. And then he said in verse 3, Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? And that's my question. And absolutely not. Having begun in the Spirit, we are going to be made perfect. The Bible says that Jesus offered himself without spot to God through the eternal Spirit. And that's how we're going to be perfected, is through the Spirit. By one offering, He hath perfected forever all those who are sanctified. And that is where the perfecting work. Granted, we must yield ourselves to that. That's why the Bible says, the work's already been established. He said, where is work, Mr. He's already ordained him. And what we just got to do, we got to yield ourselves. We must yield ourselves. As the servants of righteousness. And I love that work that God's... We ain't got to wonder what He already has ordained. Just let Him work it out. Amen. Just submit to God and, and yield. And it'll automatically... The Spirit... Amen. The Bible says, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. You try and kill the flesh any other way. I'm talking about... Try to just stop your flesh completely. You can forget about it. You can forget about it. There's, there's just no way to do it. Amen. Try it. Try, I don't care. Try, try every device and every means you want. That flesh is still. But if you walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. You will not fulfill it. If you just walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust. And then it goes on down to verse number, and I'm, verse number 10 says this. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things, which are written in the book of the law to them. Just like the feast. The people that command that you got to keep the feast, every one of them is cursed. If they, if, yeah, that's right. If they command it as a command of God from the law, they're cursed. All right, because they don't, none of them do it right. They, they change it. 
Amen. They say, okay, well, it's here. Amen. It's just, just, like, just, like, well, just like Jesus coming back to Mount Olive. This is Mount Olive now. Amen. This is Jerusalem now. This is Israel. Where their headquarters is is where Israel is. Come on. Where, hey, you know where the last day, te- you, you know where the last temple was? Come on. Pasadena, California. Yes, sir. Come on. As far as Armstrong was concerned, what he built out there was the last temple of God and the glory of the Lord would fill the land. Yeah, that's right. That's what the man taught. Yeah, that's it. That's what he taught. You go back. That's what he taught. Yeah, that's it. That's what he taught. And then there's where the glory of God was going to fill the last ladder house right there, Pasadena, California. He was talking about that was the building of, of, of the temple. You know. And just no wonder God destroying the work. It's just everything about it. Just destroying. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying they, they talk about all this. But if you're going to keep according to the Bible, I'll tell you there's three times in the year where all the males had to appear before God. And you couldn't do it here. You had to appear over there. So all those who are going to command it to do it, take a trip, take a trip. You better be three times a year over there. Because that's what is written in the law of Moses. And if you continue not in all things written therein, you are under the curse. So, some say, Kirk, you're, you're being hard on. No, I'm not. I'm not being hard on. I'm not being hard enough. I'm not being hard enough. What is going on in the spiritual realm with this thing? The, the Jesus, Paul warned of three things. He said, beware of the dogs, beware of very evil, evil workers, and beware of the concision. And I'm, I'm telling you, beware of the concision. What I'm dealing with is the concision. Amen. It's something that will separate you from Jesus Christ. That's exactly right. You start letting that stuff get in your mind far enough, it'll separate you from, it will separate you from Jesus Christ. Your conscience will become defiled again. You will lose that perfect peace that God gives to those whose mind are stayed upon them. You'll lose that grace of Jesus Christ and you'll find yourself in a wilderness and a confusion. And that's where you'll find yourself in. Amen. If you stay with Christ, He'll lead you in perfection and holiness. He'll lead you in true, true righteousness. Amen. The Bible talks about the inward man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And that's where Jesus will lead you to. Amen. And he said, in, going on down, in verses number 19 through 24. Verse 19 through 24, he says. You can read it all, read it all in context. I'm just getting over some of it. He said, wherefore then serveth the law? And what's he talking about? He's talking about the book of the law, people. Why? Because it just said in verse 10, all things that are written in the book of the law. And I just dealt with it. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added. It was added. It was added. Because of transgressions. And if God had to add it just to keep the people for a while. Why? Because they, they're such a transgressing evil people. And God had to add some kind of order, some kind of ordinance just to keep them. You, if there wouldn't be something like that, he had to do it. Why? Until. Till the seed should come. Now God knew when he had ordained it, it was just for time. It was till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. And then he goes down. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? No. God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up, unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, or until Jesus Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a school master. All right? Just like I say, a little child, you give him a commandment to go out, not go out into the street. That's a commandment, man. All right? But when he gets seven or eight, you change that. You know when you... Uh, hey, when you give it to him when he's two or three, I guarantee you when a parent gives a commandment two or three to a child not to go out the street. They say, well, honey, see, this is just going to be a little while, you know what I'm saying? And this is just kind of, no, the commandment usually, don't go out into the street, boy. Amen. Isn't that how some parents give it? Come on, when you're talking about the, the life and death of your child, it's just straight. As far as when they hear that, that thing's forever. <laughs> no, at the time you give it to them, as far as they're concerned, in their little mind, 
Amen. And that little understanding, that is settled forever. You will never go out into the street. Come on, today. you don't try and explain to them about, well, you know, when you get older and all this stuff, you know, I mean, other stuff. At that time, the most important thing is just to keep them and preserve them until they get older. And that's what God was trying to do. He was trying to preserve a people until the seed could come. And he had a hard time doing it. He still had to raise Jerusalem once or twice during that time, regather them until the seed would come. Hey, you don't understand how rebellious they were against God. They were rebellious people, stiff-necked. That, that's why finally God, finally God, he's going to destroy the rebels. We're not talking about the wilderness, talk about restoring. 